So Job chapter 41, the Lord is going to wrap up his perspective on what's going on as Job and his friends have spent all these chapters debating back and forth who's right, what's the truth about what's going on in my life, what's happening, and now the Lord's teaching Job because he was humble and open and willing, he's learning and getting taught through revelation the truth of the matter. He wasn't far off, but he needed to be more clear in understanding it better. So that's what he's getting here. So verse 1, Canst thou draw out Leviathan with a hook, or his tongue with a cord which thou wettest down? Now Leviathan is this concept of like a giant sea creature, uh, a big animal. Sometimes there was this legend of a sea animal, uh, like a giant squid or something, you know, like the Kraken from um, Pirates movies. Uh, this giant animal that could just, it was unstoppable. If you found, if, if Leviathan found you, there's nothing you could do. Basically, it was so unstoppable and powerful. And he's like, could you draw Leviathan out of the deep? Could you just cast a net, you know, cast a hook out there and catch him? Uh, verse 2, canst thou put an hook into his nose or bore his jaw through with a thorn? Will he make any supplications unto thee? Will he speak soft words unto thee? Will he make a covenant with thee? You know, could you catch Leviathan? Could you tame him? Could you make him apologize to you for what he's done? <clears throat> um, wilt thou take him for a servant forever? Wilt thou play with him as with a bird? Or wilt thou bind him for thy maidens? Shall the companions make a banquet of him? Shall they part him among the merchants? Canst thou fill his skin with barbed irons? or harpoons, basically, or his head with fish spears. Lay thine hand upon him. Remember the battle. Do no more. So he's saying, can you do all that? No, you can't. Don't worry about that stuff. Let's move on here. Verse 9, Behold, the hope of him is in vain. Shall not one be cast down even at the sight of him? No one is so fierce that dare stir him up. Who then is able to stand before me? Who hath prevented me that I should repay him? Whatsoever is under the whole heaven is mine. I will not conceal his parts, nor his power, nor his comely portion. Proportion. Who can discover the face of his garment, or who can come to him with his double bridle? Who can open the doors of his face? His teeth are terrible round about. So he's, he's he kind of same on this idea of Leviathan, but he's like, look, I can. I can do this. I am in control of Leviathan. There's nothing you can do about him, but I am control, basically, as God. Uh, verse 15, his scales are his pride, shut up together as with a closed seal. One is so near to another that no air can come between them. They are joined one to another. They stick together that they cannot be sundered. By his sneezings, or sneezings, I think it's just they've switched those words around, uh, by his sneezings, a light doth shine, and his eyes are like the eyelids of the morning. Out of his mouth go burning lamps, and sparks of fire leap out. So this is like a dragon breathing fire out. Out of his nostrils go smoke, and out of seething pot or cauldron. His breath kindleth coals, and a flame goeth out of his mouth. His neck remaineth strength, and sorrow is turned into joy before him. The flakes of his flesh are joined together. They are firm in themselves. They cannot be moved. His heart is as firm as a stone, yet as hard as a piece of the nether millstone. When he raiseth up himself, the mighty are afraid. By reason of breakings, they purify themselves. The sword of him that layeth at him cannot hold, the spear, the dart, nor the habergon. He esteemed iron as straw, and brass as rotten wood. The arrow cannot make him flee. Sling stones are turned with him into trouble. Darts are counted as stubble. He laughed at the shaking of a spear. Sharp stones are under him. He spreadeth sharp pointed things upon the mire. He maketh the deep to boil like a pot. He maketh the sea like a pot of ointment. He maketh a path to shine after him. One would think the deep to be hoary. Upon earth there is not his like, who is made without fear. He beholdeth all high things. He is a king over all the children of pride. So this is, uh, you know, as he's talking about Leviathan, this kind of a fictional monster, He's really talking, too, about how, you know, mighty, amazing, earthly powers, God is above all of that. He's like, none of this affects me. You are nothing compared to the powers and, and ideas of God, basically. So this is the vision that has been given to Job to understand that I command the elements. I command things. 
I say when things happen. Sometimes things happen that are in judgment, and sometimes that's not. But it's in my command. I am in control of all of it. I know the inner workings. I know all of it. It all follows me. I can destroy and I can save. I have all of it in my control, basically, is what it is. So chapter 42, Job gets to respond to God. And let's hear what Job has to say in the next chapter.